We all have a personal story that connects us to do what we do. For me, it's my little brother, Anu. Anu has a learning disability and autism. Physically, he's perfectly normal. And looking at him, he looks like anybody else. I mean, between the two of us, he definitely got the handsome genes. But despite being 35 years old, Anu functions at the age of a two or three year old toddler. And looking after him growing up was at times challenging. But our parents sacrificed a lot to give us both a happy and fulfilling childhood. Fast forward 15 years and many, many poor fashion choices later. This is a photo of me wearing golden sneakers. Not quite sure why I decided to share that. I am now the clinical innovation lead at a health technology institute. And today I want to examine innovation in healthcare and explore why I believe design is going to be central to create a happy and healthy future for us all. I hope that my reflections will allow you to think about your own experiences and maybe even make you consider a career in healthcare because we can really do with all the help we can get. Throughout my career, I've seen lots of changes. I love working as a physician, but it has become increasingly difficult for me to look after patients and give the best possible care I can. Healthcare systems around the world are under increasing pressure due to an aging population, an increase in the complexity of diseases, all on the backdrop of a global shortage of healthcare workers. We're often living longer, but with, often with greater suffering and poorer quality of life. The Health Foundation recently published a report in which they described and projected that the number of people living with major illness is going to increase by 37% by 2040 in England alone. The working age population is only projected to increase by 4% in that same period. And technology and innovation are often looked at as the solutions to help shoulder this rapidly growing burden. And for sure, the last several years have seen amazing advances in medical technologies. We've had vaccines developed at record speeds. We've had robotic surgery that makes operations more safe and accurate. And we've had gene therapy that allows personalized treatments of cancer. But the failure of healthcare today is not due to a lack of scientific progress, but rather due to our inability to translate that progress into real world solutions that impact people at scale. Despite a pressing need, the healthcare industry remains poorly equipped to go from exploration to application. And this is why we continue to be frustrated with healthcare today. And we experience long waiting times. We experience uh, difficulties with booking appointments or trying to access services. And why there is confusion over how it's possible that your healthcare professional hasn't got access in the community to your records from the hospital and why they don't speak to each other. This is why even I as a healthcare professional often see advanced health systems in the world that still use fax machines to send documents to each other or use a pager to communicate with each other and why poorly designed IT systems still contribute to physician burnout on a regular basis. So we have to do something differently. We have to look around us as a healthcare industry and think, what can we learn from others? And for me, the main thing that we in healthcare can learn from other industries is our approach to problem solving. For me as a physician, I've been trained to think in a very specific way. We are trained to think almost like detectives, like Sherlock Holmes, to look for clues. As soon as a patient walks in the room, we immediately start to analyze how they walk, analyze if they have any things on their nails that could give us a clue or any rashes on their skin, anything that we can pick up that allows us to go from a long list of possible things that could be wrong with someone to a single diagnosis. And this way of thinking, this narrowing down, Recognizing patterns works really well when you're trying to make a diagnosis or look after patients. But when you're trying to solve complex, knotty problems in healthcare, like how to introduce a new service, how to improve efficiency or reduce costs, this way of work thinking doesn't work. Rather than narrowing down, we have to broaden our thinking. And the analogy that I've really enjoyed recently is rather than trying to be a detective looking down a magnifying glass, we should try to be a bit more like a pirate looking through a telescope, broadening our horizon and looking for the next best thing. 
The other reason why I really like this pirate analogy is because innovators, by definition, have a rebellious side to them. I'm not saying go and take over another ship or anything like that, but they will often challenge how something is being done today and go against the grain. And that's not necessarily because innovators look for solutions that no one else has thought of or are particularly creative, but it's because they've got a different approach to looking at problems. And this divergent way of thinking naturally leads me on to the double diamond as described by the British Design Institute, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with by now. But what I love about this diagram is that it forces us to think about problems before we think about solutions. It also forces us to broaden our thinking before narrowing down on what exactly the heart of the problem is and what the potential solutions could be. We will all benefit from spending more time in this half of the diagram falling in love with problems as opposed to trying to come up with solutions to problems we don't fully understand. In reality, however, healthcare is full of examples of poor design, and this is a real-world physical experience that I had. I was on call for the transplant team one evening, and we had received a kidney that we were going to transplant that night. So I went to the ward, gave a high five to the nurse, and went to grab the organ from the organ box. I picked up this heavy box, which is ice, full of ice and, and this donated organ, and went down to the operating theatres, which is on the floor below. Rather than drag this heavy box down the stairs, I thought, let me take the lift. So I step into the lift with this precious gift that someone's donated that's hopefully going to transform someone's life. And this is what I see when I go to press one on the lift panel. As you can imagine, I quickly jumped out the lift and not wanted to get stuck with this donated kidney in a lift and went down the stairs and we did the transplant and the patient was fine and they went home the week after. But this just demonstrates that how the simple design of a lift panel can have a significant impact of how we go through our daily lives. And the context of healthcare, that can have a significant impact. The best part about this story, by the way, is that this part of the building where this lift is in doesn't have a third floor. So what happens when you press three? I don't want to know. So how do we make design the heartbeat of innovation? For me, it's all about adopting a curious mindset. I had a great conversation with a designer at a UX conference a few years ago where she said, as a doctor, you're expected to be the expert in a particular field and have all the answers to the questions that people have. Whereas for her as a designer, she said, she approaches every conversation trying to leave her past biases and knowledge behind and tries to consume information as a blank slate. And this really switched something in my mind because I was so stuck onto the idea of having to be the expert. Whereas today, I am so comfortable with being the most ignorant and naive person in the room. It is absolutely liberating and I absolutely love it because I can now take away that pressure of having to have all the answers and say things like, you know what, I don't know. Or I don't know, what do you think? And if you don't know either, why don't we go run some workshops and figure this out together? And that's been super, super liberating and has really transformed the way I approach problems now. So I want to give you three strategies that I've picked up during both my medical and my design training that I apply to my innovation projects on a regular basis. So I learned very early on as a doctor that in any emergency situation, the first thing to do is to take your own pulse. And what that represents is before embarking on anything, try to take a moment of pause and reflect on what you already know about this topic. What prior knowledge, experience or expertise do you have that you can take forward? And also this moment allows me to say, if I don't know anything about a topic, then that's fine. It's fine to not know something about something and still work in that space. For example, I'm currently working um, with a group of colleagues in the field of pharmacogenomics the science behind how our genes relate to how we respond to medicines. And if we, are to, if we are to test for these genes, we can make medicines more safe and effective. An awesome space to be working in, but something I knew absolutely nothing about as a surgeon. However, I remained open-minded and tried to consume information like the blank slate that designer described to me. And now, and I think this is where the magic starts to happen, I'm able to apply my own training in design and technology together with my colleagues in genomics and start to make connections that no one's made before. And I think this is where real innovation happens, when you start to bridge gaps between disciplines and specialties. 
Secondly, it's all about identifying who is affected by the problem you're trying to solve. And this is really hard in healthcare because people that are affected by the problem, the patients or healthcare workers, are often not the ones in decision-making positions. This means that solutions are often designed to appease managers, healthcare leaders, or maybe governments. And therefore, they often don't have a good understanding of what the real world challenges are on the front line. And solutions don't solve the right problem or don't solve them in the right way. This was a, a classic example of that where someone thought it was a really good idea to tweet a QR code under the banner, innovation means growth, trying to demonstrate that they were really advanced with technology. Now, most of you will know Twitter is most commonly used on smartphone devices. And in fact, the statistics show that 77% of Twitter or X usage is on mobile devices. So if you've got a QR code in your hand, unless you've got a second mobile phone with you that you can then use to scan this QR code, tweeting a QR code about being innovative actually just demonstrates that you're the opposite and you don't understand how to solve problems. And we should all avoid falling into traps like this and trying to use technology just for the sake of it. Thirdly, and this is my favorite part, is all about building the right team and finding people that you connect with to solve the problem that you're hoping to work on. You will all have heard the phrase, the smartest person in the room is the one that's listening. And though I completely agree with the idea of surrounding yourself with the best and brightest people you can find, I would actually take this a step further and say, the smartest person in the room is actually the one that's asking the right questions, that's actively listening and gathering insights from a range of different perspectives, and is then able to organize their thoughts and ideas based on different viewpoints to create a vision. And this is really where I want to leave you in the final idea worth sharing I want to impart. And that's the importance of creating your own vision that is diverse and connected to your personal values. For me, I can remember the reason I wanted to work in healthcare was due to my personal experiences with my younger brother, Anu. And I would love for you all to go away today and think about what really drives you and what influence you want to have on the world. Because if you do, you'll innovate with purpose and have impact at scale. Thank you very much.